Have you ever been asked the question, what job do you want when you grow up? You know, when you think about it, it's a really weird question. But here's the thing. It's a question that teenagers and kids get asked all the time. You know, I believe this is one of the worst questions that you can ever ask someone. Why? Well, it's because most people don't even like their jobs. Most people aren't passionate about what they do. A study by Deloitte in 2014 showed that 88% of the workforce lacked passion. 88%. Now, do I really want to continue to work hard in high school, spend all of my nights studying for that assessment task or that examination, to then go to university, where I met with a huge ton of debt, and in return I get a diploma that says to me, hey, Kailash, good job. You know, now you're going to work an eight to six job for 40 years of your life. You're going to be in an old cramped cubicle. And hey, guess what? 88% of the people around you don't even want to be there. When I look at that, that does not look fun. And if I ask many of you, you would probably say the same thing. Wouldn't it be better if, instead of people asking you, what job do you want when you grow up? They ask you, what are you passionate about? And this all comes down to meeting a passionate person. You know, when you meet them, it just feels like their passion radiates towards you. You know, they're engaging, they're uplifting, and when you're with them, you feel just so happy. On the other hand, you meet some people, and it just feels like the energy has been drained from you. They're missing that spark. And these are the normally, you know, the people at the parties that you tend to talk to for a while and then try and leave. <laughs> See, personally for me, I'm so fascinated about the idea of passion. And when I talk to adults and teachers about it, they just tell me to focus and pass my maths exam. They tell me passion will come later. But I'm not convinced. You know, when I look around me, I still see so many people still waiting to find their passion. You know, some people say to me, hey, Kailash, don't worry about that. You are only 15. Just play it safe. Ah, uh, sadly, 88% of people are playing it safe, but losing a part of themselves in the process. Uh, much to my mum's dismay, my biggest fear is not really failing my maths exam. It's living a life where I'm not passionate about what I do. And the question that really bothers me is, how do you explain why some people lead these amazing, passionate lives while others just seem to exist? There must be something else. And I'm so grateful I'm surrounded by thousands of passionate people, and all my friends and family are. So I went out and asked them. And from that, I sort of figured out that there were three keys to finding your passion. The first thing I did which I must say was absolutely amazing, was I just looked up the word passion. But I was so surprised. Because you know from such a young age, you've heard things like, to find your passion, do what you love. Or if you do what you love, you never work another day of your life. But when you look up the origin of the word passion, it comes from the Latin word pati, which means to suffer. So thinking about that, if you really want to find what you're passionate for, Look for first what causes you pain. You know, personally for me, what I'm passionate about actually came from my party, my pain. Um, see, in primary school, I was one of those hyperactive, happy kids. I would wake up my parents hours before school started, you know, dressed in school uniform, ready to go. And that was mainly because school was amazing, and yes, that was fun. But also because handball is one of the best sports that has ever been invented. <laughs> and I remember I went from loving school one day to absolutely hating it. And the reason for this was I got severely bullied. And I just remembered, you know, the moment for me getting ready to get to go to school was to pretending to be sick all the time. And I felt like I lost all my self-confidence and I felt like I had no voice. You know, it got so bad, I had to change schools. And to cope with this, 
My father taught me how to speak in public. And what I realized was slowly, you know, over time, I regained my voice and enjoyed being up on stage. So thinking about it now, what I realized was what caused me pain, I could use to fuel my passion. So if you really want to find your passion, just look for what causes you pain. Where do you see suffering and you are not willing to look the other way? It could be seeing you know, refugees doing anything possible to look after themselves but their family to escape a war zone. It could be something environmental, such as seeing animals dying in the plastic-infested waters that we created. Or let's say it could be something personal. Were you bullied? You know, were you harassed or discriminated against? Whatever it is, I believe it should make your blood boil. And you should be outraged that this happens in the world we live in. The second key is to have the courage to pause. We need to stop the constant mental chatter that our lives, we live our lives in. The second key is, instead of thinking about your passion, allow your mind to empty and see what surfaces. You know, sadly, our minds are so cluttered, and we rarely get this time. I believe it is because of our addiction to our smartphones. A study by Deloitte has shown that a person checks their phone 46 times a day, while those between 18 to 24 look at their phones on an average of, average of about 74. We just seem to be constantly mentally bombarded, be it with Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook, LinkedIn, if you're one of those people. And what this does, though, is it makes us obsessed rather than passionate. They seem so incredibly similar but they're powerfully different. You know, a powerful way to find your passion is to create some headspace away from the usual distractions. It sounds ironic, but for me, what I'm passionate about, um, how I found my passion and my painting moment was when I went to India. It just jolted me out of my everyday thinking. I remember being at Delhi Station, and I got lost for my parents. And that's something you don't want to do in India. Anyway, I was looking for my parents, and in Australia, it's pretty easy to find them, because you just look for the brownest people in the room. <laughs> in India, I can assure you, that does not work. And so I was lost, like, where is my parents? And my dad's not tall, so it's pretty hard to find him. And I remember seeing something I've never seen before, and that was poverty on a mass scale. I saw children begging for food. And in Australia, you don't see stuff like that. You might see a documentary, yes. You might see something from World Vision or some glimpses of it, you know, in the corners. But in India, it's there. And what India made me do was think about how privileged was I. You know, to be born into a country I was born into and into a place like Australia. But more importantly, India made me think about what gift I was given and what gift I want to give to the world. The third key is to find a purpose bigger than yourself. You know, once again, there is another paradox, and it is to find your passion. You have to stop thinking about yourself and start to think about others. You know, the one thing I've realized about going to school every single day is that the focus is always on the exact opposite. In the standardized test that I'm forced to do, I'm always fighting for a higher rank than the person next to me. The focus is always on my marks, my success, and making something of myself. But there's something wrong about this, and that's because passion is about finding a cause that is not devoted on yourself, but a cause that is devoted to serving others. You know, the second thing I realized about school, I realized when I failed as subjects. And I must say, it hurts. Um, firstly, there's a fear of what my teachers are going to say, but mostly to snide and sarcastic remarks of my classmates. Uh, you know, the fear of being labeled as dumb. And what I realized was that the last thing I wanted to do was fail a subject again. So I stopped taking risks. I started to play it safe. But, you know, when I started to research and interview these passionate people, 
there was one thing that came up, and it was this idea of innovation. And they kept on telling me that, well, the main idea about innovating is to fail fast and to grow from that. But as Ken Robinson says about our schooling system, we stigmatize mistakes. How can we solve the problems of the future when from such a young age we're taught that we just need to play it safe and ultimately be fearful of failure? With saying that, there are some people that I look up to, the heroes, and one person that I am deeply inspired by is a 23-year-old boy in Slat, and he is trying to fix one of the biggest problems on our planet today, the plague of plastic that is polluting our oceans. You know, for the past few years, the Ocean Cleanup, a company that he has created, has been working on an innovative solution. Um, this all really started when Slat was 16. He went diving, and he found more plastic bags than there were fish in the ocean. And this really pained him greatly. But he had the audacious idea of putting a long bar in the sea to catch the passing plastic. In effect, he created a new artificial coastline, something that has never been done before. You know, with this innovative idea, there have been so many critics. And some people in the scientific community have said that his idea is naive. You know, a waste of time, money, and energy. But let's say his plan does work. He will be able to get rid of half of the plastic stuck in the largest of the ocean vortex, oceans. And now, you know, this idea has grown into a company that employs 70 staff members and has over $32 million worth of funding. What I believe is the paradox is those people who are really passionate, they're willing to fail at something. They're not addicted to success. They are comfortable to welcome failure in an attempt to get closer and closer to a solution. We need a generation of people that are not you know, addicted to success, but are willing to devote themselves to a cause. Now, even though I'm 15, I am seeing glimpses of my purpose. There is a possibility it will change, that's okay. But for now, my passion is teaching children how to build self-confidence and resilience through finding their voice. And I do this through the art of public speaking, you know, a skill that my dad once taught me when I got bullied. Um, you know, I pursued this by starting up my own company called Academy of Speakers, and we have already trained hundreds of students. This has now allowed me to start up free programs for indigenous and refugees. You know, mainly these people might not have been able to get access to these programs previously. But you know, when I'm saying this, I'm just reliving the amount of mistakes I've made along the way. And when I've made these mistakes, people say to me, hey, Kailash, you don't know what you're doing. And you might as well quit. And to tell you the truth, I'm a bit sensitive. Those comments do get to me. But what keeps me going, though, is the knowing that I could potentially prevent the pain that I once felt. You know, even though I say all of this, some people still might come up to me and say, well, Kailash, I've done your three steps. I don't know what I'm passionate about. And you know what? That's totally OK. If that is the case, though, there's a solution that you might want to try, and that is follow and support other people's passion. A person whose passion I have been deeply inspired by is Gavin Larkin. He's the founder of a suicide prevention organization called Are You OK? You know, when Gavin Larkin was young, his father took his life. And this really devastated Gavin. But instead of, you know, even though he made it in this world as a director of a successful marketing agency, Gavin was fearing he was heading down a similar path to his father. And not only did he himself want to make sure that he didn't feel this way, he wanted to make sure that no one else felt this way. And one thing I really admire about him is that instead of running from this pain, he ran towards it. And at a three-day leadership seminar, he was forced to pause and think about what was deep in his heart. And he came up with the idea of Are You OK? You know, sadly, at the age of 42, he passed away. But you know, even while he was in hospital struggling from the pain of his treatment, 
He was passionately working on this cause, knowing that this wasn't just about him anymore. This was about something bigger than him. And now this idea has turned into a dream where everybody feels connected. And sadly, I think one of the worst things is that we would never know how many people Gavin's passion has saved. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a thing I would like to share with you, the last thing. And I figured out that my children, and probably your children, won't know what a cassette tape is. But I can promise you, they will know what the effects of climate change are. Living a life of passion won't be an option to fix the problems that we've inherited. It must be a necessity. So instead of asking someone that boring old question, what job do you want when you grow up? Maybe you might want to ask them, what causes you pain about the world we live in? What gift do you want to give to the world? And what purpose are you willing to devote yourselves to? Thank you.